I was in high school and the most dreaded thing happened. The worst thing in the world for a high school student, a zit, a zit on the forehead. You know what, high school students, you got acne or whatever it is. And I just thought, I'm, that's it, my life is over. I'm alone, no girl's gonna, gonna wanna date me, I, you know, I'm gonna die, blah, 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 right? Well, two people came to me to comfort me. First was actually my, my mom. And I think this is the last time I, I ever put makeup on. She, she gave me, uh, women, you know what, I'm, what that stuff is. It's like a touch, touch up. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of like brown or tan, the cover up, you know, on, on the old zit, right? So, but more importantly, she assured me, hey, it's not the end of the world, right? You're okay. Second person that came to me to comfort me and, and give me assurance was our Lord. Now, it sounds very trite, right? But it was a moment as a high schooler where I was suffering. I felt alone, isolated, fear, shame. In the life of prayer, turning to God in my prayer, my heart was filled with his love and his consolation, and I got through it. The other time, too, in high school was I got sick, and it was the flu or something, and, and all night I was, I was throwing up. I was throwing up all night, and I was pretty violently actually throwing up. Well, I was fine the next morning, and I was ready to go to school, and I looked in the mirror, and all the blood vessels on my face had, had like, burst. So I looked like a freak. I literally, like, one of those, you know, villains from, you know, Avengers or something. Uh, my face was all, like, had purple and red streaks all across it. I just, it, again disaster. My life was over. Um, and it was actually my, uh, my grandma this time who, who came and gave me assurance that, Hey, it doesn't matter, right? You've got a good soul. People love you. You're going to be okay. And then again, the Lord life of prayer, but it's amazing how things on our face can cause that sense of isolation and fear and shame. So we know what the leper is going through leprosy, skin disease, Leprosy, the, the big takeaway, I think, from, from the leper in, in, in the ancient world, and especially in ancient Israel, was this sense of isolation. The, the leper literally had to remove himself or herself from the community. They had to live apart in a separate village. You know, think about like the, the lepers 1,800 years later on the, the island of Molokai in Hawaii, where St. Damien would go to minister to. They had to isolate themselves. They were literally dead, dead from the world, dead from their family. Also, the leper couldn't go to the temple in Jerusalem. Now, for the ancient Jew, this, this was real death, real spiritual death. The temple was, was God. It was the dwelling place of God, the Holy of Holies. That's why Jesus says, look, I'm, I'm the new temple. I'm God. The leper, by not being able to go worship in the temple, was, was literally cut off from God. Living hell. That's what hell is, separation, isolation from God. When we sin, when we feel this sense of fear or shame, not necessarily from sin, but from anything, right? Whether it's a zit or, or, uh, or something else going on, you know, something humiliating. What happens is we have this sense that we're alone. Now, this is, to me, one of the most beautiful parts of the spiritual life. The aspects of prayer is a union of hearts. Your heart, my heart, with God. When we are in love with God, it's presence, it's union, it's communion. It's a sense that I'm not alone, that God is with me. God loves me, and he's going to send me out. He's going to take care of everything. When I prepare couples for marriage, uh, engaged couples, I, I often will ask them, uh, what would it be like if you were to break up right now? This this marriage prep meeting doesn't go well and you're, you fight on the way back and, and it's over. What, what, how would you feel? Now, the couple always says, I, I can't imagine that. It would, just, it would be devastating. My life would be over. It'd be like losing a limb or like a parent. I, I just, my life would be incomplete. I, I'd be a total mess. So they're saying, I need this person in my life. And when we get to the bottom of that need, it's, it's a sense that no one wants to be alone. This couple doesn't want to be alone. They want this other person. The presence of their spouse gives them meaning, 
gives them fulfillment, completion. And they can go to this person to talk, you know, how their day is going or if they're having a bad week or just to, to watch a movie, just to be around. In fact, I would say if you're not married, any vocation, this is the heart of any vocation, whether you're a priest, a religious, you're single, you're married, it's always about love. The heart, the heart of any vocation is love. And one of the, the fundamental aspects of love is presence. Now, all of us, whether we're married or single or a priest, are called to love God. And again, love is, is that presence. So, you know, today's Valentine's Day, um, and it's fitting. We have Lent coming up as well. It might be worth reflecting on your love for God. How does your love for God, how does God's love for you complete you? Like that engaged couple, you know, to, to reflect on, you know, why do, I, why do I want to get married to this person? And what would it be like to, to not be married to this person? Maybe do that with God. Why do I want to be with God? And what would it be like to not have God in my life? And one thing you can do to help, to help this is, is to write it out, actually. So, you know, lovers will write notes to each other. In fact, I have, a, I have an engaged couple write, you know, write down and then read to each other basically their love letter. You know, why, what are their favorite memories? Why are they doing this? Do that with God. In fact, that's what journaling is about. And in fact, we're giving away this weekend and, and throughout Lent, we have journals in the back, free, free journals uh, from Dynamic Catholic uh, so pick one up or pick a bunch of them up on your way out or you can get it on Ash Wednesday. We'll, we'll have them in the back of the church. Grab a journal and maybe that's what you can do. Your love, you write your love letter to God on this Valentine's Day or, or maybe make it one of your Lenten exercises that, you know, every day I'm going to write something. It doesn't have to be long or once a week on Sunday. I'm going to write a little love note to God, how I'm feeling, uh, what, what I, I sense God is doing for me, the presence that he's giving me. Just like my mom and grandma and God himself gave me that, that assurance when I was freaking out in high school. Um, because that served me well. My, my sense of why God's love is so needed in my life has served me well and still does, right? Because I still suffer. Now, it's not like because I get zits or, you know, my blood vessels burst in my face. But, you know, there's I have challenging moments and in times where I feel shame and, and fear and isolation, and I turn to God in prayer. And the, and the love that God, through prayer, pours into my soul keeps me going, and not just keeps me going, but gives me a sense of beauty about this life. So, so friends, write, write in your journal, pray to God, love God, experience that sense of fulfillment and, and deep union. Amen.